Last video, we looked at players that turned down a multi-year contract extension, holding out for more money in free agency, and ended up losing due to a variety of reasons, including decreased performance, injury, as well as just overvaluing what they could get in the open market. This time around, we're going to flip the script and focus on players that turned down extensions and ended up winning, signing massive deals in free agency. We'll get into the winners after the intro. Gotta admit, this video was way harder and way more time consuming than the previous one about players that bet on themselves and lost. There's a ton of difficulties figuring out if deals were offered or what their real value was. I even tried going to Reddit to see if people knew of any examples other than the ones I had already found. They didn't. Multi-year contract extension negotiations happen nearly every offseason with a lot of different players, but the details of those extensions being leaked is a relatively recent phenomenon. In that sense, this is going to skew very recent. There's also difficulties because not all contract extensions are really equal. I was able to put extensions into three main categories. First is what I call token offers, which are offers that are within days or weeks of the player declaring free agency. These offers, in practice, are just to test to see if the player truly knows their value in free agency and is an opportunity for the team to say to the fans, we tried in trying to extend a fan favorite player. There's a lot of examples of this happening, but the player isn't really taking any risks in turning it down. Prime examples of this are Mark Teixeira turning down 8 years $140 million from the Angels to sign 8 years $180 million with the Yankees. CC Sabathia turning down 5 years $100 million with the Brewers and then signed for 8 years $182 million with the Yankees. Anthony Rendon turning down 7 years $201 million with the Nationals and signed 7 years $245 million with the Angels. And Bryce Harper turning down 10 years, 300 million with the Nationals, and signing 13 years, 330 million with the Phillies. Now, the second category has a little more risk to players, but not much compared to the token offers. These are offers that happen just before a player's final season with the team. It includes a little more risk on the player's side because things could go poorly in that final season, but it's still a far cry from the amount of risk someone like Juan Soto is taking on turning down a massive contract while still under team control for multiple years. Examples of this are Corey Seager turning down 8 years $250 million from the Dodgers prior to 2021 and then signing 10 years $325 million with the Rangers. Albert Pujols turning down 8 years $200 million with the Cardinals prior to 2011 and signing 10 years $240 million with the Angels. Max Scherzer turning down 6 years $144 million with the Tigers prior to 2014 and signing for 7 years $210 million with the Nationals. Alfonso Soriano turning down 5 years $50 million with the Nationals and signing 8 years $136 million with the Cubs. And Shin Su Chu turning down a reported multi-year deal with the Indians, which the exact details never leaked, before being traded to the Reds and then signed a 7-year $130 million contract with the Rangers. But the third category is the one where there's the most risk. The early career offers. This is like Juan Soto's recent $350 million contract he declined with the Nationals. Again, it's rare for details to leak on these deals, and teams offering massive extensions for young players is a relatively new concept among Major League Baseball GMs that we've really seen ramp up in the last seven to eight years. With that in mind, the biggest declined offers I could find. First is Manny Machado. Entering 2015, Machado was lumped in with Mike Trout and Bryce Harper as the best of the best young players that debuted before they turned 20. Looking to try and secure him long term, the Orioles offered him an 8-year, $64 million extension, which seems laughably low, but Machado was going to make the league minimum in 2015 at $548,000. He turned down a guaranteed payday on the hopes that he would outperform that in the next four years. Instead of taking the deal, Machado made it to free agency in 2019 and signed an incredible 10-year, $300 million deal with the Padres. Looking at just those eight years the Orioles offered $64 million for, Machado instead made $141 million during that time and is guaranteed another $192 million after that. Next is Francisco Lindor. Lindor came up in 2015 and immediately became one of the top shortstops in the league. After his second season, the Indians tried their luck on negotiating a multi-year extension with him, offering eight years, $100 million. After Lindor declined, they again tried to extend him in 2021, offering him over $200 million. Again, Lindor declined. Finally, after trading him to the Mets before the trade deadline, the Mets were able to extend him, offering 10 years, $341 million. 
If we look at that initial eight-year, $100 million deal he turned down, Lindor is now guaranteed to make $187 million in that same time, with another $205 million after that. Then there's Mookie Betts. He may go down as the champion of turning down extensions. You could say he bets on himself, sorry. Prior to the 2017 season, the Red Sox offered him a five-year, $100 million extension, only for him to say no. In 2019, they offered an eight-year, $200 million extension. Again, a no from Betts. And then in 2021, the Red Sox again offered an extension, this time $300 million, and yet again, a no from Betts. Not able to get him to sign to a long-term deal, the Red Sox traded him to the Dodgers, only for the Dodgers to immediately extend him to a 12-year, $365 million contract. If we look at the first five-year, $100 million offer, surprisingly, Betts came out on the wrong end, making only $81.4 million in those same five years. However, he more than made up for that turning down the eight-year, $200 million deal, where he is guaranteed to make $209.4 million. But the biggest gain on those previous extensions is the additional $200 million he will make after 2025. Finally, the one example I can find prior to 2015, Alex Rodriguez. This one you could say falls into the other categories, as the offer from the Mariners was closer to free agency than that of Machado, Lindor, and Betts. But the numbers are so ridiculously different, and it's the only example I could find prior to 2009, so I'm going to need you to get all the way off my back on including this one. Oh, okay, let me get off of that thing. Thanks. The Mariners offered an extension to A-Rod of five years, $95 million, that covered 2001 to 2005. Instead, A-Rod elected for free agency and signed the biggest contract in baseball history at that time with the Texas Rangers. 10 years, $252 million. In comparison to that $95 million offer, A-Rod not only made $114 million from 2001 to 2005, but was guaranteed another $138 million from 2006 to 2010. However, A-Rod outdid himself. Prior to 2008, he again signed the largest deal in Major League Baseball history with a 10-year, $275 million contract extension with the Yankees, taking him to 2017. All in all, the Mariners offered him five years, $95 million, and A-Rod went on to make $483 million in the next 18 years. So those are a bunch of players that turned on a potentially lucrative contract extension, and it completely paid off in the end. Will it pay off for Juan Soto turning down $350 million? Only time will tell. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please drop a like and a subscribe. I'm trying to do weekly videos for the whole 2022 season. A few of those videos are showing up on the screen now. Click on one if you like it. Thanks.